Hello, and welcome to the online edition of Nightwatch for March 2023. My name is Bill, coming to you from the Pseudicum Planetarium here at Adventure Science Center in Nashville. And as always, we'll start with the moon phases for this month, and we find the moon will be full on March 7th. Last quarter moon on the 14th, new moon on the 21st, followed by first quarter moon on the 28th. Also, we can't forget this month that daylight saving time begins on Sunday, March 12th, so don't forget to turn your clocks ahead. Also this month, we do have the vernal equinox, the official beginning of spring in the northern hemisphere, while fall begins in the southern hemisphere. That will occur on Monday, March 20th at 4.25 p.m. Central Daylight Time. As we look at planets this month, we find that Venus and Jupiter, two bright white star-like object planets in the western sky at sunset, are passing by each other as Jupiter gets lower and lower. Jupiter will pass by Venus on March 1st, producing a beautiful conjunction of these two bright planets. But then Jupiter will continue to get lower and lower and will be lost to the glow of evening twilight as we go toward the end of the month of March. See the very thin crescent moon just past its new phase, passing by Jupiter on March 22nd. The next two nights, the moon will continue to get higher in the sky as it passes by Venus on the 23rd and 24th. The planet Mars is higher in the western sky, leaving the constellation Taurus, where it resides in the beginning of the month, and moving toward Gemini, where it will reside by the end of the month. The first quarter moon will pass by Mars on March 27th and 28th. As we look at the sky at about 8.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time, we find the winter constellations of Orion and his two faithful dogs, Canis Major and Canis Minor, along with Taurus and the constellation Gemini, are heading toward the western part of the sky as we move around the sun, and the spring constellations are getting up higher in the eastern sky, including the king of the spring season, Leo the Lion, whose head and neck looks like a backwards question mark shaped group of stars and his back legs and tail is represented by a right triangle on its side. Between the constellation Gemini and Leo is the extremely faint constellation Cancer the Crab rising up high in the east right in front of Leo the Lion. This very faint group of stars looks like an upside down letter Y. However, you do need to be far, far away from city lights to see the constellation Cancer because these stars are very faint. In city areas, it looks like there's a blank area in the sky between Gemini and Leo. Facing toward the north, we do have the two bears, Ursa Major, which is now rising in the east-northeastern part of the sky, and Ursa Minor, of course, right at the north star, the little bear, whose tail star, the end of his tail, marks the North Star. Now, why do these bears have such long tails? Well, according to one of the stories, these bears have long tails when Zeus threw them into the sky by holding onto their little fuzzy stubby tails and throwing them up high into the sky and their tails getting all stretched out. Also part of the two bears are the familiar pictures that we usually call the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. Now, if you'd like some more information and something to print out, check out our online star chart at adventuresci.org slash starcharts. And don't forget to visit us here at the Pseudicum Planetarium for our regular night watch show under the beautiful 63-foot dome of the Pseudicum Planetarium here at Adventure Science Center. And also check out some of our other shows and programs happening here at Adventure Science Center. Check out the main website, adventuresci.org. Again, my name is Bill, and I hope you enjoyed this month's online version of Nightwatch. We hope you can visit us here at Adventure Science Center and the Pseudicum Planetarium. Until next time, I wish you clear skies.